this week's goal show, international football. We follow Spain and Italy to Eastern Europe in pursuit of World Cup qualification. Ecuador star Felipe Casido talks about his nation's chances of a place at Brazil 2014. We'll see how he got on against Chile. Plus the latest on Radamel Falcao's mission to lead Colombia to the finals. And Alessandro Del Piero makes his home debut for Sydney FC. We start with Spain's trip to Belarus on Friday with Vicente Del Bosque's side hoping to extend their 23-match winning run in major championship qualifiers. Spain had begun their campaign for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil with an unconvincing win in Georgia. They were ahead here in Minsk after just 12 minutes when Pedro flicked the ball into the path of Barcelona teammate Jordi Alba to score. Pedro then latched onto David Silva's pass to make it 2-0 on a chilly night in Eastern Europe. Despite playing on the wing, Pedro scored again from a Xavi assist with 20 minutes left, as Belarus failed to contain the Spain threat. And within three minutes, the 26-year-old had completed a hat-trick and a very comfortable win for the world and European champions. A satisfactory way for Spain to warm up for their midweek showdown with France in Madrid. Georgia and Finland shared a one-all draw in Group I's other game on Friday. But Spain and France appear destined for a fascinating battle for top place. Italy were also in Eastern Europe on Friday taking on Armenia. After a draw and a win from their opening qualifiers in Group B, Cesare Prandelli's team were eager to avoid a slip-up. Freya McCoyan's handball after only 10 minutes saw Italy awarded a penalty. Andrea Pirlo putting the Azzurri ahead from the spot. Armenia had followed off a 1-0 win in Malta with a narrow defeat in Bulgaria. Here they fought back admirably, equalising through Henrik Mkhitaryan. The Shakhtar the next forward, who'd made headlines having netted 15 goals already in the new domestic season in Ukraine. Armenia went on to have several more opportunities, but their misfortune in front of goal was compounded when Daniele De Rossi headed in a PLO cross against the run of play after the break. The home side's hopes of an upset were completely extinguished late on when Pablo Osvaldo headed in a De Rossi free kick. The Roma strikers' third goal in qualifying so far. The win meant Italy could go into Tuesday's clash with Denmark on top of Group B. Denmark were held in Bulgaria on Friday, with the Czech Republic beating Malta. In Group C, Sweden were looking to make it two wins out of two as they ventured to the Faroe Islands. Eric Hamron's team had seen off Kazakhstan in their opening qualifier, but here they were given a rude awakening. Playing on a brand new artificial surface, the Faroe Islands found themselves in front when defender Roj V. Balvinson fired in after half-time. Hamron responded with a double substitution in the hope of avoiding any red faces among the Sweden contingent. Fulham's Alex Kaczyniklic was one of the changes he made. Just three minutes after coming on to win his second cap, he'd rescued the situation for Sweden, finishing from an incisive Zlatan Ibrahimovic pass. Dane Lars Olsen is in charge of the Faroes after the departure of Irishman Brian Kerr last year. His side had no answer to Ibrahimovic. The Paris Saint-Germain striker netted his 35th international goal, this from Pontus Vernbloom's pass, 15 minutes from time. Enough to save Sweden's blushes, against a team ranked 158th in the world. An important result for Sweden, ahead of their midweek home game against Germany. The Germans maintained their 100% start to the qualifying campaign by thrashing Ireland in Dublin. The 
picture. Former Manchester City star Felipe Caicedo is hoping he won't be doing much of this in the summer of 2014. The 24 year olds hoping to lead Ecuador to the World Cup finals after they missed out in 2010. Now playing his club football for Lokomotiv Moscow in Russia, Caicedo is confident Ecuador are pointing in the right direction. We have a strong attack, which is very fast. Our players are young and ambitious, and I think in that aspect we have improved a lot compared to other Ecuador squads. We also have an extraordinary team in defence as well. Generally, we have improved in all aspects, and although Ecuador has good national teams in the past, if this isn't one of the best of all, we are certainly close to it. Caicedo's a man on song at the moment, ahead of Ecuador's crucial World Cup qualifiers against Chile and Venezuela. He'd scored two in two games for the national side. Speaking ahead of the Chile encounter, Caicedo was in confident mood. Chile are very strong in all areas. We are going to play at home and we have to hope that that will help us. But it will be a very difficult match. We have to play with patience because all the teams that play in Ecuador seem to close their defences and wait for us to attack. The bad thing is that Antonio Valencia won't play because he was sent off in the last qualifier. It will be a shame not to have our best player, but we have to develop with others that are available. Valencia is the man Ecuador are pinning their hopes on to lead the national team to Brazil 2014. The Manchester United winger is the second most capped player in the Ecuador squad. Right now, Antonio Valencia is the icon of the team. He almost always makes us play well and look good. At the moment for me, he is more than a friend. He's somebody that I respect for all of the things he has achieved and he has done. Valencia's late dismissal in Ecuador's previous qualifier, a one-all draw with Uruguay, deprived his team of his services as they welcomed Chile to Quito. Caicedo started the match, played some 5,000 metres above sea level at the Atahualpa Stadium in the Ecuadorian capital. After a 3-1 home defeat by Colombia in their last outing, Chile were keen to make amends. Juan Carlos Paredes' inexplicable own goal put them into a first-half lead. But hoping to extend their 100% home record in qualifying, Ecuador were level within eight minutes. And it was Caicedo netting his fifth goal in five international games. Ecuador stepped up the pressure in the second half in front of an expectant home crowd. Shortly before the hour, Renato Ibarra's slalom run into the area was cut short as Pablo Contreras clattered into him. Contreras was dismissed for his misdemeanor, handing Caicedo the chance to add to his tally. The striker saw his penalty saved by Miguel Pinto, but pounced on the rebound to nudge Ecuador in front. Chile were then reduced to nine men late on, when Juventus star Arturo Vidal was sent off for elbowing Luis Saritama. And Ecuador made sure of the points in stoppage time, when former Everton and Wolves player Secundo Castilla headed in from close range. Meanwhile, Colombia have the chance to go top of the South American qualifying group as they welcome Paraguay to the coastal city of Barranquilla. The form of Atletico Madrid striker Radamel Falcao is helping Colombia's bid to qualify for a World Cup for the first time since 1998. The sought-after striker curled them ahead in the second half with Colombia in pursuit of a third straight win.
Led by Argentine Jose Peckham and Colombia had come into this game on the back of high scoring wins against Uruguay and Chile. Falcao coolly added another late on, his 15th goal in his last nine games for club and country. Bolivia and Peru were both fighting to keep their hopes alive as they met at high altitude in La Paz. The dizzy heights didn't seem, though, to affect Peru's Juan Carlos Mourinho. His magnificent goal had his side dreaming of a first away win in World Cup qualifying since 2004. But Peru couldn't build on their lead. And Alejandro Chumacero's equally spectacular goal after half-time saw Bolivia rescue a point. <laughs> Elsewhere, two Lionel Messi goals helped Argentina see off Uruguay as they stayed on course with a 3-0 win. Argentina then able to head into their trip to Chile on Tuesday on top of the group with Colombia and Ecuador close behind. The top four at the end of the campaign will qualify automatically with the team that finishes fifth entering a playoff with a side from the CONCACAF region. Coming up in part two of this week's goal show action from Brazil where the national championship season is approaching its climax. And it's Del Piero versus Heskey down under. Welcome back to this week's goal show. Still to come, former Chelsea defender Michael Mancien has words of advice for England's young stars. And highlights from the second weekend of the new A-League season in Australia. The domestic season in Brazil is edging towards its conclusion. Defending champions Corinthians are way out of contention for the title this time around. Having focused their attentions on a first ever Copa Libertadores title, the South American champions are now gearing up for the FIFA Club World Cup in December and a potential semi-final clash with European champions Chelsea. In midweek, Corinthians hosted Flamengo, with the visitors from Rio eager to stave off the threat of relegation after a poor campaign. Renato Santos was making his debut for them after moving from Avai. The defenders' volley had Flamengo in front half an hour in. Corinthians have set a modest target of 45 points for the campaign, with Copa Libertadores qualification for next year already assured. Fabio Santos set up Edda Nilsson as the home side drew level after half-time. <laughs> Corinthians then took the lead when Paolo Andre headed in a corner. Brazilian Qatari striker Emerson Sheik scored the two goals that won Corinthians the Copa Libertadores final against Boca Juniors back in July. A cult hero here at the club's Takumbu Stadium as a result. He made it 3-1 in the final minute. There was still time for Portuguese international Liedson to score against his former club, but it came too late for struggling Flamengo. On Sunday, Santos were looking to climb the table at home to last season's runners-up, Vasco da Gama. With their leading marksman, Neymar, busy on international duty with Brazil, the hosts were ahead inside ten minutes. Argentine Ezequiel Morales had scored in Neymar's absence in midweek in Santos's 2-0 victory at Botafogo. The striker scoring for the fourth time since a summer move from Gremio. The home side, who won the Copa Libertadores in 2011, kept up the pressure, and Vasco's Fernando Pras was called into action midway through the first half. Bruno Perez's swerving shot almost catching the goalkeeper out. 
After the break, Santos once again looked brighter against the side chasing a top four place. Before Vasco even had a chance to settle, Morales was through on goal again, doubling Santos's advantage. His third goal of the week, edging Santos closer to back-to-back -back victories for only the third time this season. Vasco tried to find a way back into the game, but their opportunities were few and far between. Ed Eloise managed to beat the offside trap just before the hour mark, but Santos goalkeeper Rafael Cabral was quick to avert the danger. 2-0 it finished, and Santos moved into the top half of the table. Round 30 of the season also saw Atletico Mineiro keep their fading title hopes alive with victory over Recife. Palmeiras' position in the national championship is looking precarious after they lost to Nautico. With eight games left to play, 2010 champions Fluminense are closing in on another title. Vasco's loss afforded Sao Paulo the chance to climb into the Copa Libertadores qualification places. At the foot of the table, Palmeiras are nine points from safety after three successive losses. Fellow Giants Flamengo aren't safe either, with player unrest not helping their situation. The opening of England's new St George's Park Centre of Excellence kicks off our roundup of some of the stories that made the headlines last week. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were present at the official unveiling of the £105 million complex, which will be base for 24 England teams from junior to senior level. We're really lucky, really, to have facilities like this, and, and it's obviously a long-term plan, and hopefully it can, it can bring success to the, to the national teams. While it's hoped St George's Park will offer greater help in nurturing the English football stars of the future, former Chelsea defender Michael Mancian gave his own advice. Now with Hamburg in Germany, the 24-year-old is one of the few English players featuring in senior football abroad, and he wants to see more do the same. A lot of English players, they want to stay in the Premier League and uh, maybe they don't want to leave home so much. Maybe they have family, so you, you never know the reasons. But, um, I'd encourage it for any, any young guy that wants to play football and wants to improve. Liverpool were dealt a blow on Thursday with the news that striker Fabio Barini had suffered a broken foot. It left Brendan Rodgers' team with just one fit senior striker, with their £10 million summer signing from Roma expected to be out for several weeks. Former Netherlands star Edgar Davids caused a stir in joining League Two strugglers Barnet in a player coach capacity. The 39-year-old will assist manager Mark Robson and had been coaching an amateur team in South London since his brief spell with Crystal Palace in 2010. I'm just learning the trade and in that perspective um, I think also there's a challenge to also develop the talent that was uh, that is running around here. But you have to see it as a long-term process and in that process of course we want to have results but also important to develop your, your talents because I think it's, uh, we have a lot of talent and in the future they can become great players. Further afield, Marcello Litti was forced to deny speculation. His Guangzhou Evergrande side was set to sign Didier Drogba from rival Shanghai Shenhua. Shenhua's financial problems have led to speculation over the Ivorian's future. Litti could add the Chinese Super League title to his glittering CV this coming weekend. Kaka made his return to the international team as Brazil beat Iraq 6-0 in a friendly on Wednesday. The Real Madrid playmaker was on the score sheet as well, in this his first appearance for his country since the 2010 World Cup. And tributes were paid over the weekend to former West Germany international Helmut Haller, who died on Thursday, aged 73. The striker was perhaps most well known for scoring his country's first goal in the 1966 World Cup final against England. The second weekend of the new A-League season saw Alessandro Del Piero and Emil Heskey meet for the first time as Sydney FC hosted the Newcastle Jets. And it was Heskey's Jets who struck first, 
as Ryan Griffiths gave the visitors the lead after 11 minutes. But Del Piero pulled Sydney level soon after, and in some style too. That's what they came to see. The former Juventus player beginning to repay his multi-million dollar contract with his first goal for the club. Not to be outdone, Heskey put the Jets back in front before the break. The 34-year-old's volley was also his first goal since his move to the Southern Hemisphere. It got worse for Sydney in the second half. Craig Goodwin's clever chip, making it 3-1 for Newcastle. Blake Powell came off the bench and scored to give the home side some hope of a late comeback. But Newcastle held on to secure victory and leave Sydney without a point from two games. Almost a thousand kilometres up the East Coast, champions Brisbane Raw hosted Melbourne victory. It saw a return to the Suncorp Stadium for former Raw boss Andy Postacoglu, but he saw his side fall behind to Thomas Broich's first half goal. Victory had lost their derby with Melbourne Hart on the opening day and quickly fell further behind. Eric Partelou's header making it 2 0. Last season's top scorer in the A-League, Bursar Barisha, opened his account for the new campaign after the break. Gifted this one by Mitch Nichols. The Albanian almost added another six minutes later. But a belated offside flag cut his celebration short. Nichols' earlier selflessness was then repaid. This volley making it 4-0 with nine minutes to go. And Berisha made it five in stoppage time as Brisbane ensured a nightmare return for Foster Coglu. <laughs> Elsewhere during the second weekend of the season in Australia, Adelaide United continued their impressive start to the new campaign, beating Western Sydney Wanderers 1-0. And the Central Coast Mariners triumphed over last season's runners-up, Perth Glory. Adelaide's win means they're the only side to have picked up maximum points from their opening two games. Sydney and Victory lie at the other end of the table after their poor starts. Arsenal star Danielson is the latest winner of our Goal of the Week vote. The midfielder's on loan at Sao Paulo in Brazil at the moment. This thunderbolt was his first goal anywhere in nearly two and a half years. It earned more than 50% of the votes in our global poll on Goal.com. Coming up, five more goals from which to choose your favourite. First up, the second of Pedro's hat-trick during Spain's demolition of Belarus. Goal two is an equally impudent finish by Colombia hotshot Radamel Falcao, the second of his two against Paraguay. The opportunism of Peru's Juan Carlos Mourinho makes his goal against Bolivia a worthy contender. It's goal three. Goal four is from the same game. Bolivia's Alejandro Trimacero rescuing a point for his team. And finally, goal five, a winner of this poll in his Juventus days, Alessandro Del Piero. The Italian's first goal for Sydney FC down under. That's your five to choose from this week. To vote for your favourite, just head to the video section on Goal.com. On next week's Goal Show, Guangzhou Evergrande go in search of the win they need to claim Chinese Super League glory under Marcello Lippi. And Fluminense continue their pursuits of a second title in three years in Brazil.